I wonder if unit is here where that hump is. I gotta make sure I don't stick my hand in the wrong spot. Oh, this is so much mud. I was afraid to stick my hands down here. I don't know if his head is this way or that way or... Oh, that's his front end. Okay. Yeah, that's his front end. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's his head. Come here, unit. Oh my God. Come on, buddy. I got you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I'm getting wet. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Hello. We've got an unbelievable day planned. Later on, I've got to fish out two massive obese snapping turtles, one of which is just three pounds shy of the record for its species. But first, we're gonna start with something that I'm freaking out about doing because I've been that excited about it. Welcome to the New Jersey Pine Barrens. This is our brand new toad ranch enclosure from Jared and Denny Lynn over there. And once again, they have sent us an unbelievable unit. This one is really interesting though, because it's a cohab, which means two different species of reptile are gonna be living in it. And it's also both terrestrial and aquatic, which is why you saw me install a filter. In addition to the filter, we have some new features in this enclosure that we haven't seen in other ones that we've done with Toad Ranch, starting with this awesome viewing window. The reason that this viewing window is here is because of that door. So allow me to demonstrate for you. You've had a long, hard day. You want to come see your reptiles. You close the door behind you. Wow, look at that. I can see my reptiles right here. Incredible, isn't it? On top of that, we have a screen top which we haven't done before. If you look at the other enclosures that we've done with Toad Ranch, they're closed in up there. That's because the other animal going in this enclosure really needs some serious ventilation. And because this is going to have a partially aquatic setup, we don't wanna have an overabundance of humidity in here because there's already gonna be plenty of it. So we're gonna grab an acrylic tank to go in here because the American spotted turtles are going to share this enclosure with the other inhabitant. This is a four by two acrylic tank that some of our spotted turtles have actually been living in. So we drained it, we dried it out a bit, but we don't wanna lose the good biology in the sand base here. So we're going to essentially just fill it right back up. It's gonna be in here. The spotted turtles are gonna have a land area right here where they can lay their eggs because it's gonna be a male and three females that are living in here. And we're gonna add all other kinds of awesome stuff to really bring this thing to life. And what's interesting is, this backdrop that you're seeing, this is what it looks like throughout much of the southern New Jersey spotted turtles range. It's all pine trees like this, and then there's vernal pools and marshes that the turtles occur in. So this is something that really is close to my heart growing up and seeing these animals in these habitats and now being able to replicate it here in what's basically our showroom is really, really awesome. So enough about that. Next up, I think what we have to do is we're gonna start getting the frame on, but what's really cool is there's gonna be a viewing window underneath so that you can actually see right into the water area for the turtles. Look at that so far. I'm already like freaking out over how awesome this is gonna look once this thing has water in it. Uh, let's go ahead and install this. This new feature is the side viewing window that I just showed you guys. And we're gonna peel the backing off this. This is just plexiglass and it's gonna be held right in place here. All right, so now that the acrylic tank is in place, I'm gonna add some silicone to the inside of the framing here so that it's held in place. There's nothing never to worry about with it shifting. Um, and also there's gonna be substrate around this whole thing. We don't want that seeping forward and blocking the view. So just a little bit goes a long way. Okay, the next step is gonna be putting together the canopy that's gonna go on top here, and that's gonna even it out with Iris, the Texas tortoise enclosure, and she's gonna be the spotted turtle's next door neighbor. So everything will look nice and flush, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll put that together. So what I'm 
doing now is I'm going to put these sliding doors in the track before I put the face of this on. And what this is going to do is it's going to black out the view of the lighting that's going to be on top that shines through the screen lid, um, screen top. And that's going to make it look nicer because, you know, if you keep reptiles, you know what it's like to stare at a bunch of heat lamps and cables hanging out of everything all the time. It's not exactly aesthetically pleasing. So Toad Ranch has come up with a way to block that. So before we finish the canopy up top, I have to fill the acrylic tank with water because what I have to do is run the wire, the cord for the filter through the top canopy and get it plugged in back there so you don't see it. And obviously I can't plug that in without it being submerged in water or it'll burn out. I just got a notification that one other piece to the puzzle just got delivered, so I gotta go grab it. See what it is. Ah, very cool. These are Toad Ranch's new vent covers. So these are Toad Ranch's new vent covers, which are really cool because if you want to plug up a vent, you know, typically you would do it from the back of the enclosure, but since I already pushed this one into place, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration from the front. So if you need to trap some humidity for whatever reason, or you're letting out too much of it, whatever you need to do, go ahead and cover them up from the back or the front like that. Pretty cool. We got some new goodies sent to us by Toad Ranch for lighting this time. These are Arcadia products, some of the absolute best reptile lighting out there. And these are smart UVB and LED bar kits, uh, which means they're app controlled. You can control them right from your phone. So we've got a Jungle Dawn and we've got uh, the Pro T5, which is awesome. Turtles require UVB. And uh, this is gonna really illuminate the uh, <laughs> enclosure. We've got our canopy on, we've got our acrylic tank filled, we've got the filter on, we've got the heat lamp in the corner, which is actually an Arcadia Deep Dome light, which really heats up reptiles. We've got our bright lighting and UVB up top. Hmm. A couple more steps and then we get to put in the inhabitants. Okay, what I want to do first is I have a bunch of actual pine tree branches that have died off and fallen off natural occurring pine trees. And then I went and I got fake pine needles and pine cones and drilled holes and glued them in. Uh, you guys have probably seen us use them in other enclosures and I'm going to put some in here. I want to get some of these branches coming up to create depth uh, to make it look like there are trees, pine trees, in the foreground. So I did end up filling this back gap here with substrate because it just makes sense to do that because what I'm going to try to do is disguise as much of this acrylic frame over the tank as possible. I want this to look natural. Um, and once I start getting things like these tree branches in and other like basking platforms for the spotted turtles, I won't be able to get back there with substrate. So I just did that first. But the main big land area where uh, the spotted turtles will be able to lay their eggs, I haven't touched yet. All right. So. We're just recreating a forest in the Pine Barrens that is dominated by the pitch pine, Pinus rigida. My favorite tree, actually. So these are actual pieces from dead pitch pines. You can get these fake pine needle bunches from uh, places like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Drill a hole, hot glue it in there, or just wedge it really good. And the reason that we're creating this canopy and this kind of like jungle gym of areas is because the animal that's gonna share this enclosure is arboreal, which means it likes to go up into treetops. In addition to that, this helps create more of spotty sunlight over this, what would be a vernal pool found in the Pine Barrens. And that's because spotted turtles, although they are avid baskers, because they're really small and black, they heat up really quickly. So they prefer spottier sunlight instead of just being completely blasted with it at all times. It stresses them out, they get too hot too quick. And these are actually more cold water turtles. Uh, they don't like being overly hot. So 
we are creating a nice natural area for both species of reptile that are going to live in here. This piece of wood is epic. It has so much character, which is important, and what it allows for is for the animal that's going to share this enclosure with the spotted turtles to slip into here, take a little chamber down there, and then it'll be able to hide out in this pocket, which we can also cover for it so it feels secure. The challenge is going to be getting it in there because uh, it's a big piece, but I'm in love with it. And if I play my cards right, it might, it might serve a dual purpose where the spotted turtles can use the lower portion of it to come and bask on. Wish me luck. All right, I'm really, really enjoying the way this is coming out. We've got depth, we've got hiding areas, we've got arboreal areas. We still need to do some stuff to the aquatic spot. Um, but before I get to that, I'm actually going to add the substrate now into this back main land area so that we can wedge a couple other things in. Now I'm not using anything store-bought for the substrate in this enclosure. We're using the natural earth here, which is going to be a combination of soil, the sugar sand that you find in the actual New Jersey Pine Barrens, leaf litter, and of course pine litter, because that's what these animals occur on. That's what's best. Okay, we got our substrate in. I am gonna add some ground cover, so you know, like leaf litter and pine needles. Um, what else? Well, now what I wanna do is try to anchor another piece of pine here. Uh, bro. Land area just about complete. Now, it's time to prepare the water area more for the spotted turtles. And the reason being is because although they are a semi-aquatic turtle, spotteds are not the best swimmers. Males will accidentally drown the females. So if you keep spotted turtles, make sure you litter the water with areas for them to grab onto and easily get up and out. So we have a fake stump from Universal Rocks. We've used Universal Rocks in a plethora of our enclosures, everything from the fake rocks that they make to their water dishes and of course their logs and stumps. This is exactly what would be submerged in a wild spotted turtle's habitat. That looks cool. This thing looks amazing, but no Pine Barrens piece of nature would be complete without pine litter. It's refuge for the animals, and it just ties it all together. Gonna add a little bit of vegetation. This is duckweed. It's a floating plant found in a lot of aquatic turtle environments. And the stuff can get pretty explosive, so we're not gonna add a ton of it. Sometimes it takes off, sometimes it doesn't. We have so much of it here in our ponds that we always have access to it. And that's gonna help the spotted turtles feel a little more secure. Now let's go introduce them. Here they are, one male and three females, all adults. This is North America's spotted turtle, Clemmys guttata, one of North America's smallest turtle species. These are all reproductive adults that will not get any larger. I am so thrilled to introduce to them this unbelievable enclosure. I wish I could live in here. The Pine Barrens is my favorite place on earth and to have a little slice of it like this is pretty incredible. So, are you guys ready?
turtles get their name from having a completely dark colored carapace littered with beautiful yellow spots. Sometimes the spots are larger, sometimes they're really tiny like you're seeing here on Dotsie, and they can be covered in them or they can just have one spot per skew. They also have beautiful orange markings on the sides of the head and on the top of the head, and the way you distinguish males from females is by looking at the face first and foremost. The female has a lighter colored face, usually really heavily peach colored or orange colored, and she has orange or yellow colored eyes, whereas the male has chocolate brown, dark colored eyes, and an overall darker looking face. Also on the plastron, the males have concavity here so they can fit on top of the females during breeding, and they have a longer, thicker tail. Spotted turtles are incredible. They're actually migratory, and they move from wetland to wetland during different parts of the year. So for example, they may hibernate in a deeper marsh, but then in the spring, they'll move to a vernal pool where they know there's gonna be amphibian eggs and larvae that they can eat. After that, especially if the vernal pools start to dry up, they'll seek deeper water in cooler areas because the sun becomes so intense in the summer here in New Jersey, and in fact, they do this throughout their range. They're carnivorous, and they'll take advantage of fish, insects, crustaceans, mollusks, anything that they can get their little mouths on as long as they can actually crush it. Because as you can see, they are very tiny, and when they're full grown, some of them barely make it to four inches. They're a heavily protected species, so make sure you know your state laws before getting involved with this species, and only look into purchasing captive bread. What do you say, Dotsie? You ready to get in there? Meet the other inhabitant of this brand new beautiful toad ranch setup. This is Mr. Morrow and he is an adult male corn snake. Snakes happen to be my second favorite of the reptiles, second only to turtles and tortoises, and this happens to be a very endangered gem that occurs right here in the Pine Barrens. So endangered that Casey and I had to get a special state endangered species permit to be able to possess a normal or wild type colored one. I have enjoyed several years now working with corn snakes in the Pine Barrens doing radio telemetry on them and also drift fence studies. Corn snakes are an amazing species. They're pretty much strictly rodent and bird eaters and they do of course occur right next to and with spotted turtles in our beautiful state and not just here in other areas too. So I would literally be doing radio telemetry following around tracking a corn snake and see spotted turtles basking on logs and flats right along vernal pools and marshes in the barrens. You might notice that Mr. Morrow has cloudy eyes and dull coloration right now. That's because he is in blue or in shed, meaning he's about to shed his skin. He's still growing and snakes do shed throughout their lives, so I don't want to disturb him too much longer because this is a sensitive time for snakes. So I'm going to release him into this brand new enclosure and I can't wait to see all the favorite areas Areas that he finds. Again, they are arboreal, so he's going to spend a lot of time in those fake treetops, which is going to look awesome as he looks down over the basking and swimming spotted turtle. So here we go, Mr. Morrow. Welcome to your new home. There he goes, right down that hole I was hoping he would use. Now, what Morrow might do in here is, he might actually use this as a shed tree. When we're working with them in the field, we can find out if a tree is a shed tree by looking up and seeing all these old sheds that are just hanging down from the branches. It's pretty amazing. They just all know to go up there. That's where they want to do it. They use scent trails. They shed their skin there, and then they come back out, and they could stay in one spot for three weeks or more. Even though I've grown up here in New Jersey, this thing is allowing me to live out a dream. I've got a slice of the New Jersey Pine Barrens right here in our nature room slash reptile building, and it's all thanks to Toad Ranch. These enclosures are not just your average plastic enclosure. They're durable, yes, and they are made out of plastic, but it's actually the stuff that's used for marine architecture, and the different specifications that can be made to these things really benefits not just the animal, but for the keeper, too. There's so many awesome things that go into making a Toad Ranch enclosure, and it's a lot of passion and care and attention to detail. That's what you want. You want to offer the animals the absolute best. In our opinion, Toad Ranch is the best. So if you want to get one of these enclosures and go pretty crazy with it, or if you just want a basic unit, whatever it is, make sure you use our affiliate link in the description of this video. Jared, Denny Lynn, you guys have done so much for us. Every single enclosure is special in its own right, but I got to say this one right now, is in the lead for my favorite. I mean, there's just so much to it. It's a cohab, spotted turtles and corn snakes, two species that can live in harmony if you give them what they need. And Toad Ranch is the company that can do that. So since we've moved things around out here, this is the big area that Janet and Unit, the common snapping turtles have been released into. Um, 
And of course I don't see them, so wish me luck. I gotta make sure I don't stick my hand in the wrong spot. Probably should locate units so I don't have a little accident. Oh, so much mud. But it's what snapping turtles like. Oh my god. Come on, Janet. Oh, jeez. She is so much stronger than me. Here's Janet. I gotta get her out of here uh, and over to a holding tub. Good thing it's not that warm out. Because she would be really thrashing. Oh man. These turtles are so strong, it's unbelievable. She's trying to go back to the water again. Okay, just a holding tub for a little while. Man, these things are unbelievably heavy. Uh, now I gotta find unit. I'm just afraid to stick my hands down here. I don't know if his head is this way or that way or I'm trying to feel my foot. Oh, that's his front end, okay. Yeah, that's his front end. Okay, yeah, that's, that's his head. Come here, unit. Oh my god! Come on, buddy. I got you. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> oh, I'm getting wet. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Hello. He's lighter than Janet, but I think he's stronger. Hello. Okay. Oh. Unit, a common snapping turtle. They barely fit in these tubs. That's how big these snapping turtles are, especially Janet, who was three pounds shy of the record for the common snapping turtle species. Now they're just in these tubs very briefly because I have to take them to the veterinarian for an updated weight because the goal has been to see them drop weight for their health. But you're gonna have to stick around for next week's video to find out the results.